The wife does worry. She worries every day. And I think the other women do too. I think they're pleased when their husbands say... Um, well, honestly, I think the wives get onto them every morning of a, of a bad day. Mine does, and I know that other chaps have told me the same. On a windy day, you know, before you get out of bed, uh, I'll say, Mum, Mum will say, uh, too bad, you're not going to work today, are you? And you say, I'll oh, get up and have a look at it, you know, see what it's like. You have your breakfast and they cut your dinner and uh, you shouldn't be going down there today. And you say, oh, I reckon we'll go down for a look and if it's no good, we'll come straight back. But uh, you go down and it isn't so good and you say to your fall, oh, well, you know, I think we'll just muck around the land here for a while and then after lunch it improves a bit and you get down the bush and then it probably gets worse and he stays there and, and I think you do do things that you shouldn't do. <laughs> think that most accidents happen to the most experienced operators and bushmen. The fellow that you're teaching is extra careful. The bloke that's done it for years and years and years, he's the bloke that gets lax, I think. The bloke that was hit that day didn't die, but he was seriously injured. And he'll have reoccurring back and kidney trouble for the rest of his life. He's not going to play football again, that's for sure. I suppose you could say it was just bad luck. But if we have a look at this stump here, we'll see that that wasn't the case. You see, when the bloke put his front in, he didn't make it large enough. It was careless work to save time. When he went round to put the back in, because of the shallow front and the lean forward on the tree, the tree split up, pivoted and formed a tombstone. Even then, he could have escaped up his escape path if he'd bothered to cut one. And then there's all the stuff you've got to contend with. It's not just the bad weather. There's lodges and springers. The treetops can see your makers. You've got rough terrain and downers, and no matter how sound a tree might look, it could be diseased or full of rot. No one has to be reminded that we're working in one of the most hazardous of occupations, the bush here. But even so, our fallers tend to take risks, I think mainly brought on from working in such a high production job where Producing means money. Uh, an example would be if we have two or three days off for bad weather, we tend to still try and cut a 10-day quota in seven days. And as a result, safety goes by the wayside. We must remember that when we're in the forest, we're out of our element and very vulnerable. We wear strong hard hats to protect our heads. Of course, these hats must be in good condition. It's not much use having a cracked helmet. That's not going to stop much. The boys also like the idea of these earmuffs. They want to protect their hearing. Strong footwear is essential in this job. We wear high leather boots, waterproof, 
that give us good support to the ankle with steel caps. Our bushman, who has a lot rougher going than what we do, prefers to wear spikes. That's his choice, and a good one. I make sure the saws we use are kept properly serviced. All the safety features are kept in good working order, such as this handguard incorporating the chain brake. If your on and off switch isn't working correctly, or your trigger mechanism is a bit defaulty, a bit faulty, even your dogs or your bar, if there's any malfunction there at all, sooner or later you're gonna find yourself in difficulty. Another thing it pays to keep a check on is the anti-vibration rubbers in the saw. They need to be checked constantly, otherwise your arms are gonna be feeling a bit long at the end of the day. There's only one way to hold the saw, and that's like this. Front hand gripped firmly around the handlebar, thumb tucked underneath. Don't hold the saw like this, with your thumb loosely on top or around the front. If you do, anything could happen. When starting the saw, look for a good flat surface so as the chain is not going to run into any obstructions. Place your foot under the back handle grip with your hand firmly on the handlebar. I suppose that's pretty simple to most people, but it's pretty easy to fall into the habit of drop starting. You can see what can happen, or even this one. Of course, when you're working in the bush, it's not always easy to find a flat surface, but there's plenty of stumps around and they act as a good substitute. Then we always fill up the saw with petrol and oil before we start falling. Running out of petrol halfway through a job can run you into trouble. Where are you heading, mate? Oh, yeah, there's a couple of rough ones down here in the gully. Yeah, then I'll see you after. Yeah. <clears throat> 98% of all accidents happen within seven metres of the stump. But Jack's an experienced faller and he takes precautions to reduce the risks. He's got pretty rough going in there. The first thing Jack will do when he reaches his tree is uh, check it for widowmakers. Then he'll judge the angle or the lean of the tree to find out which way he's going to fall it. From now on, everything that Jack does is going to make that tree work for him. The first thing he must do is cut his escape path. This should be not less than 10 metres long and, in a, on, and on a 45 degree angle directly behind where Jack wants that tree to go. When that tree starts coming down, Jack wants to get out of there fast. First of all, he puts his front cut in, slicing horizontally. The second cut, he brings down on an angle so that both cuts meet up perfectly. When he removes the wood from the front, he checks it thoroughly to make sure that he's got it all out. Then using the markings on his saw, he makes sure he's put the front in properly. With his back cut, he must ensure that the tree is going to fall cleanly. He does this by leaving a good even hinge across the diameter of the tree. One thing he must be careful of is that he don't cut right through into the front. This way, the tree will go anywhere. She's rough in here. 
if you take a look at any stump, it'll tell you how the tree's been felled. Let's have a look, look at this one here. You'll notice Jack has put his front cut in a third of the diameter of the tree. It's a good clean cut, which has enabled Jack to have proper control of the falling situation. He's made his back cut the right height, that is at least an inch above the front cut for every foot of diameter of the tree. Now, for you metric people, what would that be? Three inches, uh, three, here I go, three centimetres above the front cut for every 30 centimetres of the diameter of the tree? That would be about it anyway. He's left enough hinge at the back of the front cut to act as a buffer. This will stop the tree from kicking back over the stump. Jack's a professional. He protects himself and does a good clean job of falling the tree. This way, he knows he's going to get the best possible salvage from the tree he's fallen. Now, if Jack was less professional in his approach, you could get a situation like this. He's put his front cut in on an angle and it's too shallow. He's tried to adjust it with this angle cut, but he hasn't cleaned the cut out properly. And with that ridge of stuff he's left in there, there's no way that tree will go where it's supposed to. You'll also notice no escape path and no helmet. It's a dangerous and careless way of doing the job. And if you don't watch it, things like that can become a habit. This is one of the unexpected things that you have to expect in the bush. Here we have a lodger. Through no fault of the bushman, uh, a bushman who has to fall 50 or 60 trees a day that size, sometimes a gust of wind at the last moment, can put a tree in this position. What we're about to do is dispose of it in the correct way, which is to back the skidder up to the stump and hook the wire into the trunk of the tree, take the skidder to a safe distance and pull the tree down. And uh, we're now going to d demonstrate the right way to bring down a lodger. When a tree's hung up in another one like that, you just don't know what it's going to do. It's just as likely to slip to the side as anything. I've seen fallers try to bring down a lodger by putting in a new front cut and back cut. The skidder driver and the bushman need to have a good understanding. On returning to the falling area, the skidder driver should stop, cut the engine and wait for the faller to call him in. Ricky here is a young fellow who started with us a few months ago. He's picking it up well. You'll find that when he gets on this slope, he'll drop his load and winch it up in the correct manner. He won't just stay there skidding and chopping up the track. I also make sure there are good strong canopies protecting our drivers. These ca canopies are factory manufactured, meet the standards of strength and durability. I make sure that our tyres are in good condition 
and everything in good working order. Of course, the way these machines function depends on the skill of the driver. Some drivers tend to show off, which doesn't really get them anywhere. All that does is endangers themselves and their mates. Look at where this bloke's sitting. The skid is winching in a big drag and there's a lot of strain on the wire. If it breaks, and it can happen, it could cut him in half. It's all just a matter of keeping your wits about you. When you're working around trees that can weigh 10 tonnes and even more, the accidents are usually pretty bad. So what do you think about when you're falling a tree? I don't know. I suppose you're listening, watching, listening for any change in the saw, adjusting angles, even thinking a bit, I suppose. Out here, you're against nature. There's only a code, self-preservation. And if you're gonna get home to your wife and kids, the onus is on you. And there's no medals for doing things right, just a lot of damn trouble when you make mistakes. It's that kind of job. All accidents shouldn't happen, I suppose, but one that I think was very sad, uh, and I, I, I think uh, oh, I, I could mention to you, it's, it's the one about uh, uh, the bushman and the skidder driver having a good understanding with each other. What happened in this case, uh, both chaps I knew well, both mates of mine, unfortunately there's only one left. Uh, one was the <coughs> bushman and uh, it wasn't a skidder driver, it was a bulldozer operator. He went in with his drag to the landing, dropped it and came back. Well he drove back and the bushman fell a tree on him. It was as simple as that. Now, the sad part about that is that the bushman, bushman was uh, falling his tree, thinking he was doing the right thing. The tractor driver came back, probably whistling or what have you, and drove straight under it. Well, that was, there was a bad lack of education there or, or something or other. Both, both people thought they were doing the right thing.